This episode is brought to you by Off the Eaten Path. It's finally here. A great tasting snack you can feel good about eating. Off the Eaten Path's veggie crisps deliver real veggies with lots of flavor and a satisfying texture without artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Real veggies. Really delicious. Shop now on Amazon. Listening to the KSR Football Podcast. Welcome into the KSR Football Podcast. Nick Roush here with Drew Franklin, Charles Walker, and Freddie Maggard. The KSR Football Broadcast is brought to you by our good friends at Justice Dental. Your one stop shop for all your dental needs in Lexington with two locations on either side of town. Uh, Drew, he you know, he's more on the east side. I'm Team Blazer. Team Blazer Parkway. Team Blazer Parkway. Wellington. Freddie's a Wellington guy. And you can book an appointment at either one of those locations by calling 859-543-0700. Give Justice Dental a call today. We're going to have Doc Thompson in a little bit later to chat with us and to probably scold you for not flossing. Oh, yeah. I, I've been doing a bad job of that. There's no way you've been flossing, Drew. No, I don't even think I own floss, so I can't even lie and say that I've used floss. I got the little pick thing. See – that has increased my flossing tenfold. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because they're kind of – They're fun. Yeah, it's easy. You chew on it afterwards. Uh, Justice Dental actually told me to keep a bowl of those just kind of like by wherever I hang out. And, then you just and I did it for a while, and it worked, you know, just watching TV. But then I think I forgot to refill it. I forget to throw mine away, so I use the same one <laughs> like for two weeks. That's probably not <laughs> good. So you're going to pack a 500. Oh. That'll last you a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. <sighs> that's pretty gross, Freddie. Uh-oh, yeah. something just went – I don't hear anything. Oh, uh, are we I'm still going? Something. Yeah, we're still going. All yeah. right. Did you just not hear anything? I moved this. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, I hit that. Jesus. Can you hear things now, Drew? Nope. Still can't hear anything. Wow, Chuck just. Uh, I'm getting away from this. Goodness gracious, Charles Walker. What have you done to I our don't equipment? Know. And you still can't hear anything, can you, Drew? <laughs> no. <laughs> Talk again. I can hear you. Yeah. You yeah, sound, well, I can hear you. You sound great. Which one am I? You're the fourth one right here. We can turn, turn you up a little more. Is that sound there we good? go. Yeah. yeah. Chuck was just sa- being a saboteur. Oh, sorry. We'll Chuck cut that just out. doesn't want to show up to football games. He doesn't want Drew Franklin to hear. Man, I was getting roasted by some fans on those. Oh, some, yeah. Someone said, see, yeah, see, someone said, is, what is this, the first game or yeah, something Yeah, it was that? funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charles, uh, please come back. I'll, I'm here the next, I'm here for no, the no, rest no. of the season. I, no, like. Come back, put your jersey on, and go oh, catch some punch. Oh, okay, so okay. we we have we've got to talk about this Chattanooga win. It was not the win we all expected and hoped for. Uh, so here's the thing: it was a win. It was a win, three and zero. We're not going to have rounds of applause, but we will get to the good news. There was some good news, but let's start with the bad news. And number one, can we catch some freaking punts? Just I, well, I mean that, and then kick a you score a touchdown. Kickoff goes out of bounds. You get the ball in what? The get 35? a punt return, get a penalty for holding. So that's back to back special teams penalties. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's got to get cleaned up. But Nick, I, I look at this game at a macro and a micro level. Macro, the big picture is Kentucky beat a, a top 20 FCS team. Uh, not a great FCS team, but a good FCS team that I failed everyone and not researching, studying it, it like I normally do. And, and I apologize for that because I was not prepared for, for Saturday's game. 
We forgive you, Freddie. Well, I, I mean, I'm being I'm being completely honest and serious. I, I didn't. I just I overlooked them. I, I was just like everybody else. And you know, I could name a couple players, and they nothing that, that UTC did statistically jumped out at me. Very average across the board. But I didn't take into consideration a very veteran team, a top twenty team. Uh, but I looked at the twenty to ten loss to Austin P, and I was like, you know, okay. But you have to pay respect to to Chattanooga. I thought they had a great plan. Run the uh, play clock down to zero before you snap it. Keep Kentucky's offense off off the field, and play games up front. A lot of twists, turns, and all that. But hey, here's here's the deal: everybody else is going to twist, turn, and stunt. Yeah. So, to me, the the micro level is much more troubling than the macro. I saw a lot of one on one matchups won by Chattanooga, whether in pa- whether in pass rush, whether in pass coverage, uh, pass blocking. Uh, tackling, one-on-one, the micro stuff that, that, that can be fixed, but it needs to be fixed. And then, you know, and then the turnovers. Kentucky's now minus six on the season, facing a team in South Carolina that, is, that has intercepted six passes. Uh, yeah, the, the turnovers and, and the micro one-on-one losses that I saw were, 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 were very disturbing. The, the turnovers, that was a – like that's all we talked was like Drew. Can we can we just please just don't give the other team the ball now? Kentucky's defense finally they, they caused one when they needed one. They yeah. got the ninety five yard pick six. That was some good news from Saturday. But Drew, that one that one interception Will Levis threw it was about as bad of a decision. It was it was like he didn't even see the guy out there. Yeah, and I think we're seeing while there was some criticisms with his accuracy and even the way he goes through his progressions. The defender did make a great play. But that was a horrible throw. He should never should have made. Then the other one was a tipped pass. I mean, that's unfortunate. That's that's another pick. And, I mean, you can get away with that against Chattanooga, but if you do that at South Carolina, you're coming home with a loss. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, almost came home with a loss against Chattanooga. Yeah. It, but, Charles, I don't know about you. I never – there was only about uh, – I, I might have been like the second play into the drive after Chattanooga took the lead in the fourth quarter. I had a moment there where I was like, Offense, you got to do something because they couldn't run the ball. I think they only ran like 20 plays in the second half. And it was like, you, you got to get things going. I don't know if Levis took a sack. But once he ran the ball 21 yards down the field and kind of got that drive going, I was like, all right, why was I – why did I even have a second of worrying? Did you, did you ever worry that the game was in doubt? I really didn't. I thought we were going to turn it on way quicker and flip it in the second quarter. Yeah. Right before half, I kind of thought, all right, here's where we – make a big play, then we go up 14, then we come out, shut them out, we score, and we steamroll them. That's what I was picturing. Didn't really happen, but I never thought we'd be walking out with an L. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the three teams Kentucky's played, so, uh, Missouri was the was the best of the three. Then I would go Chattanooga. I, th- I think Chattanooga would beat up on ULM. Yeah, ULM, very so, bad. So, yeah, I mean – Really disappointed that they beat Jackson State because that <laughs> – so, uh, yeah. Under one wins on the season was looking right, yeah. right there. But, they were but, losing until the fourth <laughs> quarter. But but this is a game Kentucky would have lost before. So uh, the talent did come in, into play. Uh, I thought the first offensive drive was a thing of beauty. Oh, that was a great drive. But Kentucky got out of rhythm, out of balance. The plan, Cohen admitted, was not good. Uh, you know, it, personnel-wise, you, you try to take some hits off Chris Rodriguez. Everything was just discombobulated from the very – even though the first drive was successful – you know, you were seeing Magwood in there early. A lot of chances. Got a procedure Magwood. penalty. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of players rotating, rotating in and out before the game was out of hand. It's 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 much more difficult, Charles. You can you can attest if, or, or, or disagree to turn it on after you're not at your best. I mean, Absolutely. it's very hard to go uh, from you know I take a, a, a you know it, from from not playing well to turn it up to play well. I mean, you have to come out of the gate ready to play. And, and Kentucky was a buddy got the win, and, and we're moving on to South Carolina. Of all the little problems, Chuck, are there any that you think are big problems in the long run? Turnover battle. I mean, we just can't – I think Adam Luckett had a tweet, shout out to you, that we're minus six in the turnover column. And we're ten, three and zero. Ten fumbles in the first ten quarters. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. They weren't lost, but ten times the ball got put on the turf. So you do that at Williams Bryce Stadium with the packed crowd. You're losing. And you're losing, and you're you're getting you're getting creamed. I Not have, only just losing, you're getting creamed. I have two numbers that stick out at me 
other than and we've all established that the turnover margin is 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 bad. It's a trend now. It's just not a two game thing mm-hmm. happening. It's a trend. Mm-hmm. Two numbers defensively that that jump out at me. Allowing forty five percent on third down. Yeah. I mean, that's that's 13th in the SEC. That's not good. That's not Kentucky. And then maybe one that's even more concerning. The sack rate. 105th in the nation in red zone defense. Ooh. Opponents are 10 out of 10, 7 out of 10 for touchdowns against Kentucky this season. So, the offenses are extending drives with 45% on third down, moving the football into the red zone, and then scoring touchdowns on seven out of ten tries, that's concerning. Because they can't get off the field on third down. That's concerning. And I think some of it's going back to the pass rush. Now, Mark Stoops is like, well, they're throwing the ball, getting rid of it quick. You still got to find a way to make plays. Nine quarterback hurries, zero sacks. Yeah. One sack in two weeks. Yeah. Offensively, 9.9 yards uh, uh, per pass attempt is first in the SEC. I think that's good. Um, But 128th in the nation, and I hate to keep going back here, 128 out of 128 teams in turnover margin. So, can't have that Saturday in Columbia. Does run defense worry you at all, Freddie? Yes, absolutely it does. <laughs> you know, Ford, Elam Ford rushes for 128 yards and averages 6.1 yards per carry. And just think what Kevin – and we're getting ready, Kentucky's getting ready to face Kevin Harris, who went for over 200 last year. Harris has only played in two out of three games, yeah, and he's only rushed for 54 yards on 23 carry, averaging two and a half, 2.4 yards per carry. Yeah, he's ready stats. for a he's ready for a big game. Somebody did their homework. Yeah, uh, he he has had that back injury though. He didn't really practice in the preseason, so uh, and, and they've been playing that kid that was a five star that missed all of last year. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, I. The run de- – like, the, the the play that started the game off where they let a six-yard run, you see the blitz coming on third down, and it misses. Yeah. And and I think that's Kentucky's biggest problem this year it, defensively is whenever Brad White calls the shots, they're not landing. They well, landed they landed two against Mizzou, but hasn't really popped The since. 48-yard run by Ford in the, early in the game, DeAndre Square and uh, – Jacquez Jones both went to the same gap. Actually, Square ran into the back of Jones. Ford just says, hey, there's nobody in this gap, mm-hmm. and he's off to the races. So those are things you can correct, and those are things you don't expect from senior players. Mm-hmm. I also think in this game, Kentucky played hero ball, yep. meaning every player thought this was a stat-building game. Mm-hmm. Every play was going to be on Sports Center and did way, way too much and got out of – their assignment. Lost, lost a micro battle in one-on-one matchups, but just try to play hero ball. Mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of them were just playing to get to South Carolina. And mm-hmm. as a coaching staff, that's something that you kind of go over during the week and say, hey, worry about South Carolina next week. And I mean, Liam Cohen kind of admitted it. He wasn't really game planning for Chattanooga. Yeah. Um, and when the coaching staff is thinking like that, can't necessarily be upset with the players if they come out and do it too. I'll, I'll is there something to at least it was in that game and not in Starkville oh. or this coming week? Because <laughs> yeah. you still have the win. I mean, there's one of these every year, sometimes yeah. more. Absolutely. Maybe, heck, they learn the hard way and, and still manage to escape with a win. I think it's a great point, Drew, and that's why I've been slow rolling this Kentucky team. Uh, I, I didn't overreact after ULM, and I'm not overreacting after a close win over Chattanooga. Somewhere in the between there, is what Kentucky is, and what it's been to this point is a is a is a team that turns the ball over. You know, eight penalties Saturday. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you got to clean things up. I uh, I, I like to spin Drew because I'm of the belief that I'm going to walk into Kroger Field at least once in a season, and I'm just going to see a team that's not ready to play. Yeah, it like it, yeah, it, it's in. I, I had one friend like, look at them. They're joking around on the sidelines. They don't take this seriously. Alabama doesn't do that. And it's like, well, Alabama's bad games are still, you know, what was the game against Western? They're up 40 and Saban was tearing into Kiffin. You know, like every team has these. It's just they look a little bit different at different places. And uh, I can think of – Mark Story brought up two of them. that uh, Chuck, I think you remember that game against Eastern Kentucky. Do you know what happened the following week? Mm -mm. Went down to South Carolina and won. Uh, Same thing happened. Louisiana Monroe needed a Michael Horton walk off to win. Excuse me, Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah, Yeah. he rolled over that guy too. Yeah, that's a great play. 
Yeah. Next week, Kentucky goes to South Carolina and wins. They're going to lay exit points. And the one that I don't want to happen, like doing that against Tennessee, that 2018 year, you could have just ripped my heart out, threw it on the ground, and salsa danced on it. Like, do not do that in those games. I'm fine with having a letdown me this week because here's the thing, too. If they came out and beat the brakes off, won 60 to nothing, I would feel nervous about this South Carolina game. I actually think that this South Carolina game, for whatever reason, people are gonna they're, they're gonna get some people picking against them, and they're gonna be sharing that around the locker room. Like they don't think we can beat South Carolina. I think that you'll get if you didn't get their attention last week for this game coming up Saturday, then then nothing will. I think some attention will be gotten with uh, Mark Stoops going over the Ooh. film. Uh, there's no <laughs> way they won't be ready for South Carolina now. Yeah. I think about one play in particular that has me really down on the cornerbacks was Carrington Valentine trying to jump on the ball that led to a touchdown. I feel like uh, when they go watch that on the tape, Stoops might raise his voice a little bit. Yeah. Wait, was that their second? Jump, jump on the ball that went? It was the slip screen to the backside on oh. the he touchdown. He just completely whiffed yeah. and led yeah. to a touchdown when it didn't even need to be he, a touchdown. He read it well. And then and missed the tackle. The same, same yeah. on the uh, 48-yard run. Two linebackers, two senior linebackers went to the same hole, hit each other. Ford goes up the field. Ty Asian, who was the hero later on, totally whiffs one on one. Again, one on one matchups. Mm -hmm. Just and Valentine was, not was good. close, but it yeah. didn't happen, and it led to six points. Right. The uh, the one play <sighs> that I, as soon as I I saw the flag, I knew what was going to happen, and I felt bad for him. But it's also like, dude, this is Austin Dotson hasn't been given a ton of opportunities this year. I think he struggled uh, picking up the pass pro aspects. I mean, at Belfry, he was a one-man wrecking crew rolling downhill. They're asking him to do a little bit more, and he struggled with it. They gave him an opportunity Saturday, and what did he do? 15-yard penalty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty – I mean, it was it was a penalty. Yeah. It was late. But it's like – and it was a great run, too. That was one of yep. Kentucky's few yeah. good runs, and that, that's a momentum drive killer. Uh, well, this just popped into my head. Because that, that one, probably worth it. The NFL taunting penalty. I knew you were going to bring man. that up. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like you make a good play and you flex, and they're – Literally. I mean, I mean literally. Who? And I was watching – I know it happened all over the league, but I was watching the Cowboys game, and they were given a gift on a taunting penalty. I couldn't believe my eye. That was the first one of the day. And then I kind of saw that it was a theme in all the other games. That's the one I was watching live. And, heck, it looked like there's about seven or eight of them around all of a sudden. Who cares? <laughs> like it isn't, you're just like, let's just get, start giving 15 yards out for no reason. Because that's what they were doing. It's giving out 15 yards for no reason. Didn't our boy Mike Edwards get one on one of his uh, two pick sixes? I, I, mean, I you think can he did. Go get you 15 yard penalty. I, if you're getting, I, I, you get your second I believe on his second <laughs> one. Uh, With three minutes left in the fourth quarter, yeah. going up, you know, 25 points, or whatever it was. You I ever think seen that's, two defensive touchdowns on one guy? No. In four minutes? No. <laughs> that was crazy. That's, that's a key detail people are leaving out as it's yeah. being passed around. Like, I, I've it was in it. four minutes. Yeah. The, uh, the first one, too, was. Wait, was that the one where he was blitzing on in the ball? I mean, like – That was the second one. That was the second one. The first okay, one, he yeah. jumped a pass uh, yeah. and batted so it to that, himself. that one was a good play. The second one really was just like, you can't get any better dumb luck. Yeah, mm. but but he continually – he did that at Kentucky. And that's what Jordan Wright does. It's, Call it's, him a ball hawk. They're yeah. just there. They're always right place, there. Right place, They're time. always there. That Mike was always there. And he had some great plays where he would jump a pass or come over as a safety and, and have a nice pick. But – a lot of the times, the ball just bounced his way. I don't know that the the football gods are with him. I'm well, Tom Brady that. was bragging on him afterwards for mm -hmm. that same reason about being a, a ball hawk. He's just and there. I was thinking, I I know Mike Edwards grew up a huge Tom Brady fan. I'm sitting there watching Tom <laughs> Brady talking about how Mike Edwards is such a playmaker. It's got to be cool for him. And he's such a good guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, off the field, I mean, he's he's just wonderful. So, I'm, I'm very he's happy. He's got the Mike. uniform swag. And honestly, I think the Buccaneers have some of the best jerseys in the league. I'm I mean, glad they went back to the, the OGs too. Yeah, like they needed oh, yeah. that. The red, those, those mm -hmm. are red and pewter. I think is that what we call they, it? They call it pewter because I remember uh, there's like the SB Nation site they have is like pewter pirates or something like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I know that, but uh, I'm and, guilty of being a Bucks fan during the All Star years. I was bandwagon. Call me bandwagon. I, I adopted them during that little Super Bowl. You're in good they, hands with All Star. They were they were a lot of fun. Warwick Dunn. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Sap. I, who was the oh, guy yeah, that Warren had the, Sapp, the picks? Oh, when when they three, first got those uniforms, There too. was a dude with three picks in that Super Bowl, and I can't think of his name. He was named MVP. They beat the snot out of the Ravens that year. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't have it, though. And the thing, watching Edwards do that, it made me really miss Vito Tisdale because – this Kentucky needs some some Vito Tisdale, just like reckless abandonment playmaking. Like, you know, might get out of position every once in a while. But that tip ball that, granted, it bounced right into the Chattanooga guy's hands. Devontae Robinson was there. He's When the ball's in the air, you just got to get to it. Yeah. You just, whatever it is, just go get the ball. And instead, there's it's just a, a half second too late, and it goes into that guy's hands, and it's their longest pass play of the day. That's the kind of stuff, like, man, Vito, between that and the blitzing from that corner spot, he'd be raising all kinds of hell. And I'm just I, – I don't want to go over that a ton, but it's just – there's some stuff out there where you're like, man, you can yeah. really use those guys right yeah. now. And the cornerback depth, yeah, Phillips too. Mm. I mean, Juton McLean, they don't need him, but, I mean, he's missing out on big opportunities. There's other guys oh. getting the ball right now. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, Donut was out there quite a bit running motion stuff out uh, – you know, in different formations and stuff like that. And that was said to be McLean's role. So, uh, Donut's been, been a factor instead. He needs to make the most of it. Um, do we have any more bad news? Because I think we do need to get to some of the good news. Um, of which there was plenty. Yeah, there was. I mean, we, we had to sweat it out more than we thought we would. Right. But well, there was still lots of good we, things. We couldn't, yeah, we couldn't absolutely. have our stories written by the time the, no. the game was over with. Uh, I, I predicted 55-7, just a little bit off. <laughs> I was forty two three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a I did hit the Bama Florida game though. Oh, Fresno State. But my best call of the year. I just was mad oh, I didn't have money you. on it. I, I, yeah. I piggybacked that off you. I didn't know nothing yeah. about it, but I knew you were confident. All all over that Fresno State game. Good job, Nick. And shout out to let's can we let's just talk about that Penn State craziness for a second. Because oh, yeah. oh man. Bo Nix. <laughs> I mean not like <laughs> that bad. But, like, he had chances and just fourth and one fade from the goal line? What are you doing? I, that play uh, – I mean, there's I, no worse play in football I, for me. I don't care if you're Aaron Rodgers, throw, Tom Brady throwing it. I hate that play. Worst play, the goal line fade or the quarterback draw? Ooh. Um, quarterback I really, draw. I really hate the goal line I fade. I think quarterback – what, what works more, though? Because I feel like – once in a blue moon, you get a quarterback draw to work. And then, like, if you've got Seth Williams, you, yeah. know, you know, like, you, Man. You, if you have some guys out there, it can the goal line fade can work. Dorian Baker, it. EKU. Yep. What did, what did we make of the targeting it. that changed the game in Happy Valley? That was, uh, that was a bad call. What do you want him to do? He's, yeah, I don't know. What. He even said in the post game, he's like, so I'm supposed to let him score? Like, tell yeah, me what like, to do. Like that, that's <laughs> a terrible call. So, I – I did love the goal line fade because I had Penn State, so thank you very much. Also Penn State. Here, here's another question. When they were – would you take two Hail Marys or gain the 15 yards and then try to score from the 25? Because they had a chance to tie. They, they were – Auburn was able to get the ball back. I just – they've – all in college football they've been doing the short pass with the fumble ruskies, and I think the Hail Mary works better than that. Oh, but but he keeps it. I mean, there's it, more chances. I don't know. It ended Dylan Gabriel season. Yes, it did. I'll I mean, be honest. What is that play call? What? I, I was watching South Carolina against Georgia's third team. I didn't see <laughs> any of the Penn State game. It was a good game. We miss it. It was a, heck of it was a good game. game. I had to get dialed back in. I failed last week. I, so I, I, I took an L. I like it. Yeah. You're taking things seriously. I am. So, Freddie, before we dig in, dive into that, because you have been diving into it, you've been watching the tape. Yeah. I, I wanted to bring up some of the good news that we saw on Saturday, some things I like. The biggest thing that I like is that Will Levis, despite having an off day, I think he, he overthrew Wandale on a shot earlier, and then the rest of the day he was kind of short arm and stuff. Everything mm-hmm. was a little bit short. But, man, he has a really good sense of what's happening around him. I, I think he might have taken one sack maybe. One sack. But every other – man, there was a couple throws where he hung in there on third and long situations, delivered the ball, and got the first down. Yeah. I, I, I was impressed with some of those plays. And, and not being rattled because 
some of the picks he threw, things were – like, it's really easy to get down on yourself, and yet he hung in the pocket and, and continued to make some big throws. Yeah, I don't think interceptions are going to bother Will Levis. I think he's that confident in his skill set. Uh, I thought he did some really good things on, on, on the drives that Kentucky was, was balanced and on rhythm. I thought, I thought it looked great. Uh, but then had some off-platform throws that didn't go his way. Uh, I think it was like five consecutive – uh, drives that ended with a turnover or a punt, you know? which is completely uncharacteristic. Yeah. Like, like if in all the other games it was touchdown or turnover, <clears throat> yeah. like there wasn't much of that. But so, th- yeah, the game was uncharacteristic for him. Uh, but I thought I think he's mentally tough. You know, when Kentucky had to score, marched right down the field, took the lead. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought he did some really good things. Uh, I like the play made with his feet, about a twenty-yarder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a big run. Yeah, he got things going. Got things going. He didn't hesitate. I mean, he saw his lane and took it. He's obviously a good runner. That yeah. was a big play. The uh, the position group today that's going to get hammered the worst, in my opinion, is the offensive line. Yeah. I yeah. saw a lot of one-on-one losses there that, that's that's got to get fixed. The, uh, the play that was one of those, like, ooh, that was cool. The Isaiah Epps touchdown yeah. was awesome. Yeah, yeah it, was. <laughs> it was a great yeah. play. That was, I liked both Isaiah touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, two firsts <clears throat> yes. for Isaiah Cummings and Isaiah Epps. Both got their first touchdowns. Epps, Epps is, was just a – Wait, that was Epps' first touchdown? Yeah. I don't think I realized that. Yeah. yeah. It, All right, good so for him. they had a guy – Epps was running out of the slot. They had a guy on the outside. It looked like Epps was going to block his man, for, uh, the other man, for a screen. Instead, he slips it, runs a wheel. Levis gives the pump fake to the outside man on the screen, and then Epps is just standing there. Yeah. And, Chuck, I don't know if this is the case with you, but I hate – like, the wide open ones I think are harder than – like, if I'm playing basketball, put a hand in my face. Do not give me a wide open look. <laughs> I start thinking about it. But both of those, in Epps' case and in Cummings' case, Cummings is third – I don't know if it was third down or not. I think but, Cummings made it great. Catch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it yeah. was, it was a, a catch. Yeah, and, but nobody was around him. Yeah. Did you get is, – is that the case? You don't you? really think about it. Okay. I mean, no. I, I, There's way more case. time to think about a punt that's in the air hanging for five seconds than you got – three Georgia guys and you're on your own 10 and if you drop it it's a touchdown and then, <laughs> then you know faking a slip and the ball's there and I think it was it's funny when you catch the ball like a certain way like when I'm on the right side when I was on the right side you do a whole shot that way that was an easier catch than the opposite so turning my head right like that's weird to me that was weird hmm. to me just like a funky – It's just yeah. – diff- yeah, I guess the difference in like, maybe hand my dominant placement. hand on the bottom versus the top, it's just – Yeah. It is what's weird. Huh. I wish people Something could to see think you about. doing your hands mm-hmm. too. Yeah. That was like a fun little dance. Well, I mean, literally here. Maybe they can be your new uh, like, TikTok what? trend. Do it uh, again. Fancy but, like here, fancy like there. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Can we also talk about Freddie's sweatshirt? Yeah, today? I thought we were going to start mean, the what? show with it. <laughs> What's going on? I need it? one. I think it looks good. Well, good. well, Charles, you can get one if you shop like I do at the Burlington Coat Factory, a non-paid advertisement. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new one opened up right by my house. $7 for this. Powder blue tie-dye that just says Savage That's over right. it. And it's dripping. It's the savage it is, dripping. is dripping. That's how savage you You've are. got some drip I do. right now. I'm pretty cool, aren't I? I mean, yeah. That, and he's yeah. he's repping the uh, Sunday Night Football runner-up on yeah. his hat, too. Yeah. You Kansas are. City Chiefs. Yeah. Devin Key. Devin Key. Practice squad. Is he? Yeah. Good. Isaiah Cummings, that was a great play call. So was the touchdown to Isaiah Epps. Uh, beautiful concepts by Cohen. Oh, yeah. I think the development of Isaiah Cummings is so big. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that just gives you another dynamic – uh, playmaker uh, on, on top of Wandale and Josh, you get a you get a tight end that can get out and get vertical like that. That that's a positive. And the confidence in that. I mean, yeah. you know, first one, he's a freshman. I get redshirt freshman. I mean, that's that'll he's gonna be a good player. Uh, Wandale Robinson, he's got three one hundred yard receiving games. It's pretty good. When's the last? Now, I don't time? know that he's gonna slow down either. Well, I think I, I mean yeah, we kind of already talked about it. We were playing get to USC. I think they were saying, hey, let's not really use him unless we have to because he's not very big and he likes to take some big hits and then deliver some. So it was kind of like, hey, maybe you should sit out this third down. But you can't really do that when you're <laughs> down in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I think they'll get creative with him this weekend. 
What's your uh, Corey Price stat about 300-yard receiving games? Yeah. I know there's one out there. There's got to be one out there. I, I, I'm going to go with uh, LaRod King <laughs> as my guess. I would have guessed. Uh, In a row? Yeah, yeah. Randall Cobb. Definitely wasn't anytime soon. No. I guess Garrett didn't do that. Jeez. He would be my guess if it was a recent one, but I don't yeah. remember one. Um, I'm trying to – Let's. we're scrolling through the, the Corey Price stats. Um, hmm. Here we go. Derek Abney. Wow. wow. 2001. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. I didn't think he'd go that far back. That's crazy. He's awesome, isn't he, Corey? 20 years, he really is. How does he do that? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Um, most, I know how he does the newspaper stuff. I don't know how he gets these obscure stats m- like that. Most receiving yards by a U.K. player in a single three-game span since Keenan Burton had 359 in 2006. Oof. 337 yards during this three-game span. He's the first ever to have three straight to start his season and – First since Ab- I can't believe it since Abney. Yeah, that is that is crazy. Uh, do you Isaiah Cummings touchdown? Do you know who the last male <clears throat> product to score a touchdown was? Terry Samuels. There you go. Ding ding ding. I knew he was your guy. So he I'll was give my guy. Yeah, yeah. Terry fullback, Samuels. Fullback, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. I always say the three best fullbacks ever to play Kentucky: Andy Murray, Terry Samuels. And, and the taco meat. Connor. Connor. <laughs> Monto Allen. Remember, remember taco meat? Oh, I love taco meat. Yeah. That was, he got, got in trouble for ripping a parking meter. Off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that parking meter shouldn't have been talking trash. That's what I say oh, about that parking meter. I hilarious. forgot about that. That's hilarious. Oh, taco oh Will meat. Tom. <laughs> will Tom's a great name, too. Oh, yeah. Really. Is. Yeah, it is. Just two names. Like, we need to get <laughs> that. It's a parking meter. Off. We need to get the, the two name thing back, too. We do. So, I'll work on another kid, and we'll call okay. him uh, Dan Bill. All right. Here we go. That'll be that'll be the next one we get. Yeah. To. So if you're from the 606, you're always called by two names by people that can to you or know yeah. you're good. Freddie, Freddie Wayne. Wayne. I'm Freddie Wayne. What are you? Oh, I'm sure. what's they, your name? Nicholas Loring. That's too much of a mouthful. No, you're you're yeah. out. Yeah. Andrew Michael. That's just usually when I'm in trouble. But yeah, that's a good one. I'm oh, just man. Chuck, dude. I can. <laughs> Andrew Michael is you're in. Oh, oh. oh when I hear that one, it's it's, <laughs> it's run. bad. It's run. <laughs> run far. Oh, man. When you have biblical names that go back to back and they're screamed by your parents, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. I, my great aunts were all Mary something, you know. It's a big Catholic thing. You were yeah. like a Mary, Mary Jane, Mary Lou. <laughs> you had to have Mary, Mary in there. That's the only way you're going to turn out to be a good person. So there's just uh, not enough Will Toms, though. No, yeah, need a lot more Will Toms. I can, I know. I mean, obviously, I know where he's from. But if I didn't know, I could still tell you with the name Will Tom. That's that's mountains. It's easier. He's Breathitt County. Yep. Oh, home of Justin Haddix. Yep. Yeah. And for Eddie, do we know who's KSR Game of the Week this week? Kroger yes, KSR that would be week? your Pikeville Panthers visiting Ooh. your Lexington Christian Academy Eagles. Man, uh, I know this is mostly a Kentucky football podcast, but we have to mention, A, how crazy that Beachwood crowd was oh at Friday gosh. night's Kroger KSR Game crazy. of the Week. I mean, crazy. Crazy. Sold out, yeah. 3,000 people there. Like, that both, was awesome. Both, both student sections were there an hour before the game. <laughs> Packed. UK crazy. doesn't even do that. Packed. Yeah, that was crazy. And then Barkley gets a coffee from a coffee truck. Did you see that? <laughs> no. Yeah. And the coffee truck at the game. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. I would have preferred a beer truck. I tell you, yeah. I saw. Can't have that. I saw one of the craziest crowds I ever saw, uh, seen in my life Friday. Uh, Woodford County beat Franklin County. And there was not – you couldn't get another person in that stadium. Really? All shout of Woodford County was the there. Five and 5-0 with the number one RPI in 5A right now. Really? Now, yeah. Is that, is that a practice field I see when I'm driving? Yes. That's okay. Pra- yeah. Okay. It, 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 they don't even use that. They have a practice field over by the stadium. The gotcha. stadium's over by my house. Gotcha. The school's on the other side of town. Okay. Yeah. The uh, the other big game, Lex Cath, Lex and Christian, who's going to be playing this week. Yeah. They got into it um, – <clears throat> A little bit of a scandal there. Yeah, with a mascot who is – so hmm? So here's the thing, Chuck. They had a guy who was in the mascot, the, the Lexington Christian mascot. Student and, or a guy? See, that's the thing. I think the kids from LexCast say they thought he was a student. So they were – they did the thing where you push them while they're peeing and you, like, shake them around, try to get them to pee all over yourself. Mm. They rushed in the bathroom while he was in there. Man. In full eagle costume. Oh. Turns out it was a janitor. Oh. People are not happy. Yeah. Oh. 
Which well, why is the janitor in the mascot costume though? Can we talk about that? I mean, everybody needs a mascot. Yeah, Who's to say the janitor can't do it? I'm not I, saying you can't, but isn't that weird? Yeah, shouldn't. Is it normally a student? I think it's always like that's the whole yeah, point. I mean, maybe he's just really, really good at his job. Maybe he, he could is. be. Yeah, um, but like, could I, he just stop peeing though? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they if were he, pretty aggressive and like shouting at him. I I would imagine he was terrified. There's video of it. It was it was out of bounds for sure. Too far. Too, yeah. Too I mean, much. either way, it is what the players or the the no, no like just, okay. just students. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that that rivalry just went up a notch. Oh yeah. The holy war. So yeah. people are B- calling it. Yeah. Um, but Lexington Christian, they've got they're uh, good. Xavier uh, Xavier Brown, Xavier Brown and Mason Moore, who's uh, getting some D one looks. I know Maryland, Illinois, Virginia. He's committed to Virginia. He did commit to Virginia. Yeah. Okay, and then Mason Moore, Miami, Ohio. Yeah. So then Neves, the quarterback for uh, LCA, is really good too. They, they they have a good team. Two A is going to be really good with Beachwood and LCA, kind of trending towards that re, uh, ma, uh, they, rematch. They can beat a lot of the big schools. Yeah, I mean uh, every bit of it. So. Uh, Big game coming up on Friday. All right, let's talk about the big game Saturday. South Carolina, a place that I got to say is one of the louder, more impressive. Like, it, it just – not only do they do the sandstorm, but, but the stadium bounces because they go up and down. They wave their towels. They, they bounce. I mean, you can feel the press box shaking when you're there. It gets rowdy. And then Rooster Crows, this is going to be Kentucky's first true road game since 2019. The only game they won that year was at Vandy. That's not even a true road game. No, so like, that's a home crowd. Exactly. So, this is uh, – a lot of these kids, too, they haven't played. It's two classes worth of people that haven't played in an atmosphere like this. And they got to be ready. You ready for this? Will Levis Instagram, on Instagram, w.lev. Mm-hmm. His story right now is on repeat all week. You want to know what song it is? Sandstorm. You know what I'm saying? He's, a, he's steering it. Oh, yeah. I mean, on repeat all week. Do you all play that in the locker room? They do. So, we actually – coach will play it at, during practice. Or during during, during the, the locker week. room, but in practice. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then the rooster. They have the rooster crow into it. Oh, practice. man. It is it's, annoying. <laughs> it is so uh, bad. No, the worst is Mississippi State with the yeah. cowbells because – that's Stoops just, also does that. That just sounds like you're uh, shaking. Yeah. But, I mean, I will say I'm sure it, it does help in the game. I mean, it gets, like you said, it's loud. It's The cowbells, I still don't understand how those are even legal, but we'll talk about the sandstorm. It's loud. It, that's one of the most cool kickoff or punt returns image I've ever experienced. And you know what? The, the thing, too, that I, I wasn't sure about going into this year with the new coach, just how – I mean, you know, really having to escape with a, a win at East Carolina. I just wasn't sure what the buy-in from the team, from the fans would be. But for all intents and purposes, people are big fans of Beamer Ball. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as, even though Georgia beat the brakes off of them. Um, they didn't quit. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, South Carolina is better than, than I thought they were after watching them. I tell you what, South Carolina, up front, this is going to be a challenge for the Kentucky offensive line. And it's going to take a – Tremendous rebound from how they played last week. Uh, Sterling Ellis, Jabari Ellis is, is a is a havoc creator at tackle, and then Kingsley Inigbare mm-hmm. is is He's good. he plays that role that Josh Allen played at Kentucky as a as a buck linebacker as they title it. Um, he's very good. He's first team All SEC. He can get after the passer. So Darrell Rosenthal is going to have to play a much better game than he yeah. played uh, against they, uh, Chattanooga. They threw flax in there a ton. He, and yeah. And that's – they need Dare. Yeah. They need Dare to be on his A game. Yeah, he needs – yeah, yeah. But I think we can agree the players are ready for this game. They better be because if they're not, they're going to get beat because South Carolina, again, is much better than I thought. They're totally bought into Beamer. They're going to be crazy environment. Uh, first SEC game at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, the, if you look at – if you just compare units or groups – Defensive line advantage will go to South Carolina. Yeah. Linebackers uh, you know push the, it best. Yeah. Secondary push it best, right, because of the corner situation, mm-hmm. the lack of depth. Offensively, I think Kentucky gets the advantage at offensive line and at quarterback yep. and at receiver. But Josh Van for South Carolina uh, is a vertical shot. 
Mm-hmm. He had three catches for 128 yards and a touchdown against Georgia. That's pretty daggone good. Yep. So I think Carolina is going to have, going to feature Kevin Harris because Kentucky's not really stopped the run this year, and then have some vertical shot play action passes to Van against these Kentucky corners. So it's going to be a challenge. I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be a tough ask for Kentucky to go down and win. But if if you can't go down and beat South Carolina, that's in year one of rebuild then the next three are going to be a little bit too much to ask for. The thing that Cohen admitted after the game, too, that I think hampered them is the way that Kentucky did not establish the run early. Yep. You're going to see that on Saturday, Drew. That, I mean, Chris Rodriguez, he wasn't even in. He didn't even smell the first series. Yeah, I think Rodriguez might have shown up to the game thinking he might not be playing much, so everything got thrown off pretty quickly when it was a close game. I, I think they'll be able to run the ball and – yeah, you talk about it. it could be a bad look if you lose to South Carolina. But if you go down there and put it on them, what is that? Seven out of eight now? Yeah. I mean, I didn't think Kentucky would ever have seven out of eight against an SEC team that's not Vandy. So, I mean, you've got two teams in your division you've really got, got a hold of. and oh, you yeah. know, Both play, live in Columbia. Yeah, and you, you play uh, Missouri pretty well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> great. There you go. Make it three. So, yeah. my dad said when we went there my sophomore year, Fans were nice as can be. We had just beaten them at home. Fans were nice as can be. Yeah, Kentucky, because they thought they were going to steamroll us. 2015, yeah. We win. Denzel Ware. Come back, we beat them again. Come back again my senior year, and he said the exact opposite was of the fans. Now the fans, you know, hated Kentucky because they realized, man, this is a game. Hey, they're nasty down there, too. They are. They're They're, they're underrated as uh, jerks. Uh, that's the exact word I was about to say because Freddie's daughter's here, and the other word I was going to say probably shouldn't say. <laughs> but they have they are a sneaky fan base for kind of mixing it up a little bit. I've been to several basketball games, not football games, but there's always a fight and a little crossing the line with the trash talk. Kind of similar to Louisville fans. Like, just don't, like, don't know where the line is. Yeah. They're just over the top. Yeah, you know? like some of the taunts aren't even clever. It's just <laughs> expletives. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, so. It's not good. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're a very unlikable group, or they can be at times. And, and I think South Carolina is going to have the same vibe <clears throat> Kentucky had about Missouri. You know, last year Kentucky got a bad taste in the mouth by getting beat up by Missouri. I'm sure South Carolina feels the same way. Come up here with all those opt outs and people injuries and COVID and and get beat up on. I'm sure they're looking for a payback trip. Well, and this is a game that the fans, coaches, and players circle on their on their schedule. This is an SEC game we can win. You know, just going by logos. Yeah. So, well, the, the, Kentucky's going to get Carolina's best shot, just put it that way. I, I do believe, too, that if there's a unit that's due for a bounce back, it is the offensive line. Yes. Uh, not only, one, do they need it, but, two, Eric Wolford was coaching South Carolina last year. And the guy is, um, you know, he's not for the faint of heart. He's going <laughs> to get after them, and he's going to remind them that, these guys that you're going up against, they ain't no joke, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, Javon Kinlaw walking through that door, but they still got some dudes out there. Mm-hmm. So, you better bring your A game. And if Kentucky I, – I, I think part of the reason why, you know, Levis is going to get uh, a little bit more criticism for his performance from last Saturday, uh, he wasn't able to rely, rely on a run game to kind of open things up for him. You, you, you pound the rock early. You get Rodriguez rolling, you get Smoke rolling, and then it really opens up things for the passing game. Yeah, I mean, Kentucky's going to have to stay balanced. And, and didn't start the game balanced last week, but got to start balanced and stay balanced. So, yeah. yeah. Make it happen, Cats. Um, man, I, I actually will not be making the trip this weekend down to Columbia. First time I've been down there in a long time. Uh, but that is a, a great atmosphere, a great place to watch a football game. I really, really despise them, though. And this South Carolina team, even though they're better than expected, they're still not good. Like, come on. Got if you, a banged-up quarterback right now. Yeah. What, what was it, the the quote they had about Zeb's hand? It's bandaged. Can't throw. <laughs> I feel like you've got a big bandage on. This. Look, look, Jody <laughs> played wide receiver last year. They, they had to carry on Joyner playing mm-hmm. quarterback. He's now back at wide receiver. you gotta, you got to beat this team. And then four and zero. Oh, I mean, do we bring game day to town? Just not, not. I'm not looking past, but I'm just getting a little excited for the following weekend. It's night be, game we learned today. Game. Just not SEC game day, please. <laughs> oh, well, hold on. Speaking of SEC, let's talk about SEC Network Plus. 
How did it go? Did you get to – I, I assume you watched the game. You've been I talking did. about it, but we need to hear about your experience. Did not enjoy it. I finally signed up for ESPN Plus after some coaching. Okay. And I got it hooked up. I couldn't transfer it to my TV. That's a bridge too far. But I had it on my computer, which is like your – I mean, it's little. Mm-hmm. So that aggravated me. Mm-hmm. Bob Stoops was coaching for Kentucky on three different occasions. <laughs> uh, uh, the broadcast crew I did not have a lot that. of respect for Mark Stoops. What yeah. in the world? It, it just it, – I was, I, was I was in a bad mood when I got to the pregame show, and I stayed in a – this whole week, last week, was just – you know, I was unprepared. I had to watch a game on my computer, which was stupid. And, you know, during the game, I'm thinking back, I said – Chattanooga had a 0.0 chance to win and was up 16-14 in the fourth <laughs> quarter. I'm thinking, I'm going to be the biggest idiot. <laughs> yeah. you, know I mean? you know how many people are going to bring this up? And they should have. I should have never said that. That's, that's my bad. I, I, I did not uh, – didn't do a good job. So. But also, you know, you haven't lost to an FCS school in over five decades. So there's a little bit of all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were definitely wrong, but it's not like we were crazy. I do have some questions here, Freddie. I want to ask you one quickly before we get to Doc Thompson. Uh, F- Freddie, is there, like, any adjustments in particular that you, you want to see happen from the defense? That comes from our, our, our friend Austin who's listening to the show. Yeah, win one-on-one matchups. Schematically, I don't think there's anything different that Brad White can do. I mean, he's doing everything he can to win football games. Kentucky's one of the best teams in the country as far as not giving up plays of 20 yards plus. So, not not allowing the home run. There's some dink and dunk goals involved. Uh, really not stopping the run game as we've seen him before. But, I mean, we're talking like this is a, a strange occurrence. Every one of us harped on it about how hard it was going to be to replace five pros on that defense. It's, it's proven to be a tough task to replace five pros that are on NFL rosters right now Plus, an all-timer in Boogie Watson, who is high on the tackles for loss and sack list, that's a lot to replace for any school. For Kentucky, it's proven to be a challenge, and I don't think we understood just how much that challenge is going to be until we get the product where uh, Alem Ford rushes for 128 yards uh, against Kentucky. Uh, one, ben had one more question, too. Uh, can we make it a rule that Freddie Canolan or guarantee wins? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, just wait till Saturdays for what I pick. <laughs> oh, no. It's ominous. Well, Freddie, don't know. I got to call it like I see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, boy, don't. Big, big mind and heart game here Saturday for a lot of people, including me. Oh, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. I don't know. I don't like where this is going. I, I feel like we were just taking a, a train in negative town there. I, feel I like know. We what? Were, we were going <clears> to. <throat> Freddie, hop I got off. my tool belt on, and I'm about to drop my hammer, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, are you on minus five? Uh-huh. It's down to five. Down to five. Good. I love it. Minus five. I, I, bear, it, I guarantee it. it drops a three, four kickoff. I Good. tell you what, I want it in hit. six. I'm going to buy it up to six. I was invested in Kentucky over 41 points on ah. Saturday. And I didn't even have to sweat it out because it never stood a chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did double down at halftime, and. Uh, Oh, got the got the second half over at the last at the last uh, second there. Yeah, didn't have to start it out though. No, nope. at minus five, I'm with you. I'm bringing out the hammer. I got my hard hat on. Got my tool belts with me. What if I I'm told you it. Kentucky's only won once as an SEC road favorite? Good, about to be twice. There yeah. we go. I like it. That's the spirit. Get on the positive train. Get the negative train out of town. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Football is. Back. And the best bet you can make is downloading the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It doesn't matter if you're new to gambling or an old pro, FanDuel has something for everyone. And as an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you know your bets are safe. There's also never been a better time to use FanDuel because right now you'll get up to $1,000 back if your first bet doesn't win. You can even turn a small wager into a big payday with a same game parlay bet. Just sign up with the promo code SPOTIFY to place your first bet risk-free on FanDuel Sportsbook. Download FanDuel today. 21 plus and present in Virginia. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. This episode is brought to you by Verizon. The experts have spoken. Verizon has been named America's most reliable network by Root Metrics, proving there's only one best network. Best and most reliable based on rankings from the Root Metrics U.S. Root Score Report, dated first half 2021. Your results may vary. 
Well, Doc Thompson, we're happy you're here with from our good friends at Justice Dental. Uh, how are Drew's teeth looking, first and foremost? Always a pleasure to see these teeth in person today, which, <laughs> I mean, up close and personal, they look, they look excellent. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know if you want to jump in here and check things out. Yeah. I, think, I was just there recently, so I feel like I'm still pretty good. <laughs> still uh, right, pretty good. right before you got here, I did confess that flossing's been an issue. I might need a little pep talk on getting back on the right track with that, but we'll get there. I well, bought the little stick things, Doc. Yeah. But I forget to change them out, and I use the same one for like two weeks. Is that bad? <laughs> Man, I always tell people, as long if you're flossing, you're ahead of the game to begin with. Okay. So just as long as you're uh, doing something there, I'm man, I think, you're, I think you'll be okay. All right. I don't know that the ADA will stand beside that, but I will, <laughs> yeah. uh, if they're not listening, that'd be great. And, and Drew, I'm sure uh, once you hit your uh, massive bet on UK this weekend uh-huh. on, on the uh, – on the five or whatever it goes to, you'll you can buy as much floss as you'd yeah, like, man. I'll, I'll buy a fl- I, next week. I'll show up if we hit the minus five floss for everybody. <laughs> All right, man. Are we you, can make that happen. Are you feeling confident right now? Or are you feeling shaky? Some people are down after the win, and I I, 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 I would like to be a person who's optimistic, who's saying just throw the film in the trash. But I know some people are worried. Sure. Uh, I'm on a group thread about everybody is with these guys. And, you know, I was hearing the negativity after the game, and I sat there for 10 minutes, and I took a breath, and I said, guys, a W is a W. We got a new offensive coordinator. We got a new quarterback. We're getting – we're just kind of – we're getting all the kinks out. I, we won. We're 3-0. and We're undefeated. Mm-hmm. We're at the top of the SEC in, in terms of my yeah. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, so I, I was shaky for 10 minutes. I took a breath, and I thought, you know what? Uh, we're going to be good, and I'm, I'm excited for the weekend and excited to give a prediction here in a few minutes with you guys. Nice. I agree. We're, we're new territory where we're a little better than we've ever been, but we're not in let's complain when we're 3-0 and territory. Ooh, no, we're, yeah, still, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still happy with 3-0 and no matter how it looks when you're Kentucky. Everybody's happy with 3-0. I, heard, I tell you what, I heard a lot of, a lot of the guys are like, ah, you know, this is – Kentucky's being Kentucky. Heard that a bunch. I said, you know what, man? I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think so. And I mean, I, I think Freddie could probably attest to that yeah. better than anybody. Man. Yeah, I mean, that makes me mad. I agree. I agree. And it made me upset as well. And that's why I said, guys, let's take a breath here. Let's take a breath. <laughs> the, uh, the thing that really stood out to me Saturday that I had to remind myself about the new offense quarter. Liam Cohen always had a call plays. But he also has been around people calling plays for pros. And he said, you know, I got to remind myself that because I call a shot, in the pros it might not always be the case, but in the college when you tell a guy, hey, we're running a shot, they're probably going to throw it. We don't need to throw all of those. So I think there's there's an adjustment period to, to getting into to coaching a 22-year-old versus a 28-year-old who's been doing this a while, who might have a little bit more discipline. You know, it, it's it's a learning process. He's still figuring out the right yin and yang. And you know what? I will take that in a win, uh, those struggles in a win over a loss every single time. I liked what Levis said after the game. I mean, I, if they would have blown him out, I don't know what – I mean, it was a wake-up call for him. You know, I mean, it would have been easy to go down there and, and had a big point spread and then be looking to Florida the next week. And I think they woke up, and I think they're going to be ready for the game Saturday. So we'll, t- we'll take the glass half full mentality, in my opinion. Nice. Love it. Well, let's, uh, let's look ahead to some of the games. We already mentioned the Kroger KSR game of the week. There's some big games on Catterday beforehand, and one I didn't know that was on the slate that's pretty, pretty intriguing. It's from a conference that Freddie doesn't like to pay attention to. But Wisconsin – is hosting Notre Dame, and they mm-hmm. are five-and-a-half-point favorites. That's awfully intriguing. In Chicago, right? Yeah, at Wrigley Field. Oh, it's at Wrigley. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know it was being played there. So, that'll be uh, a cool – it'll be a cool-looking game. Is this at Wrigley? And it's also going to be just – I mean, the amount of just – Hobnob and Notre Dame fans that oh, are going to be there. Just a lot of disgusting. Notre Dame around Chicago. It's going to be disgusting. So, uh, and they haven't been very impressive, and neither is Wisconsin. I, I have no idea where I would go with this, Chuck. Uh, yeah, when it comes down to games like this, I just kind of bet with my heart or choose with my heart. I'm not a Notre Dame lover. You know, Rudy's is a good movie. I, <laughs> just, I love Rudy. I agree. I mean, okay. and, I, and I did and he too. was not offside. And I, lo- <laughs> I love Rudy as well. But something about Notre Dame just rubs me wrong. How That being said, I do like that tight end from Covcath. He's Michael fun to Mayer. watch, and yeah. he's huge, and he's going to be in the NFL, and he's going to be a star. 
but I'd take Wisconsin. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I uh, I don't know what I think about Wisconsin's quarterback Mertz. He's he th- he throws some bad interceptions. From my own personal experiences, anytime I've gotten confident in Wisconsin and then I've sat down to watch them have a little money on them, they play the worst football I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never been a believer in Wisconsin. I, by uh, marriage, even though I'm still not married, have kind of will be joining a Notre Dame family, so I've kind of had to adopt oh. them. So I kind of. Don't tell them. I didn't really like Notre Dame for a long time, and I'm okay. having to pretend. We won't okay. They've grown on me. You know, we got Notre Dame stuff in, up in the living room, so I kind of have to root for them. Mm, I'm sorry about that. It, it is weird. It's a weird feeling. Do you have any hunch one way or the other on this one? Do you, I- <sighs> Not a huge hunch. I mean, I, I was actually at the dinner with a, a massive Notre Dame fan on Friday, and he was giving me some insights in the game. He has, He's actually going to the game with a, a ton of guys, and um, – you know, my, my – what's what's the line? What did y'all say? Five and five. a half? Five? Yeah, yeah. Five. My, my hunch initially would be at Notre Dame. I haven't watched a ton of Wisconsin. I have watched two Notre Dame games and have not been massively impressed. But uh, they're still in the national spotlight. I mean, they're still obviously uh, vying to be in the, the top four here. And I, I think this is their chance to – to, to get there potentially. I, I don't know that they'll get there this year. They're undefeated, right? Yeah. 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 They, so, I mean, they've left the back door open against Purdue, though. I was really, was really hoping that Purdue would go up and do something there. Uh, they they aren't rolling out really dumb uniforms, Freddie, thankfully. They usually yeah. do in this series. Like, they're just adding, like, three stripes. Like, it's not anything crazy. Well, I mean, I think the conversation's interesting. Uh, Doc Thompson went to Owens World Catholic and Chuck went to St. X. <laughs> so, I was expecting different answers. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll take Wisconsin here. Notre Dame has not impressed me this year. I mean, mm. the first game of the year beat a bad Florida State team, struggled, oh, struggled against yeah. Toledo. True. That's a bad and, Florida State you know, State team. I, I know he's, he's kinfolk, but, was you know, didn't exactly – blow the doors off Purdue, and uh, so yeah. I'll take Wisconsin in the five. The one it looks like it's it's five and a half, about to be six. You know which game that I think could end up flipping the script that I'm looking forward to? What's that? Western Kentucky is hosting Indiana, and they're almost ten-point underdogs. And I know that sometimes the, the fans in the western part of the state, you know, they can get a little unnecessarily hostile. Mm-hmm. Like, guys, you're Western. Like, let's all be friends here. You don't have to want to, like, fight UK fans. Let's all get on the same page and beat those good-for-nothing Hoosiers down. Yeah, I agree with you. And you've, you have Western connections. My, most of my family went to Western. I want us to get along with them. Yeah. And I know they beat Mark Stoops early on, and that was a big win for them. But I don't like this bad blood between UK right. and Western. Let's, I want to root for you all. Let's all and I am going to root for you all. Come together. To beat Indiana. They're hosting them, too. I bet that's going to be a packed stadium down there. Uh, the hill is going to be out. Yeah. Of, you won't even be able to get up the hill down there. I've spent a lot of time down there. I had a lot of family members go down to the tops, and I'll be rooting from hard. I mean, that's in my backyard from Owensboro. I know Drew's as well. So, I mean, I've always rooted for Western. I've, I mean, I remember coming up on the on the opposite side of things here with my dad to a U.K. basketball game, and Western beat us at Rupp. I don't know if you all remember that game or not. That blew my mind. I wasn't rooting for <laughs> yeah. Western. I didn't want them to win the game, but I left out of the Rupp Arena feeling like, well, at least it was Western. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that was just me. I mean, I don't know. Not a lot of other fans probably thought that, but uh, I, I'm I'm all in. WKU, go for it, man. Uh, I hope they put the Hoosiers down. I'll be I mean, singing stand up and cheer. Tops on top. T-O-P-S. I'm, I'm a hater. Don't like them. <laughs> they don't play anyone all year, and then they, they, have, some, Army. they have some good teams, and, and they recovered. always say, well, we – we do fine in the SEC, or we do fine in the ACC. So they're they want to be Kentucky and they want to be Louisville, whatever you want to call them. I'm not a I'm not a like I don't like them. I think Indiana, I'm making Indiana minus nine. So oh wow, oh. Indiana stinks. They're overrated. They got the doors beat off them by Cincinnati. Uh, Who's good and led by a Saint X Tiger? Let's just say that oh. maybe Heisman candidate Desmond Ritter. Oh uh, my stud. Chuck. Just slow your roll down. <laughs> slow your roll down here. Uh, Tennessee is going to lose by a thousand to Florida. Freddie Emory Jones is he good? Yes, he's good. Yes, he's good. Overreaction didn't play well early. His first year as a full time starter. Everybody was calling for Richards. Richardson. Richardson. Anthony Richardson. Richardson. Anthony yeah. Richardson. That didn't happen. Man, they, uh, look, they look good in that Florida game. looks is, really is, good is to me. As bad as that two point play was, though. That was the worst mm. looking two point conversion. Yeah. I don't. Well, that was not a read option. That was a let's both run in the hole at the same time. Yeah. And the, then wait to get tackled. The consensus is today that. A lot of people are downplaying Alabama instead of praising Florida. I'm praising Florida because I thought they played a great football game. 
got down big early, came back, fought back, uh, almost won. Uh, what's the spread? Oh, that spread is 14, I believe, Florida what? over – 20. Tennessee. No, it's 20. 20? Oh, sorry about that. I got I got, I got distracted because I saw Kansas is playing Duke, and I was like, you want to talk about the worst <laughs> football game yeah. in one of the better <laughs> basketball games. Hold yeah, on. They should just play basketball. I got to find my tool belt here real quick. Uh-oh. 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 He's getting it out. <laughs> Bam. Uh-oh. Brady just hit the table <laughs> with a hammer. Give me the Gators. Oh, so, man. I got to confess something. I had that fans first, fans fest, only fans, fans fest yes. Saturday night <laughs> yep. after, after the uh, UK game. Only fans. So, you know, I'm working with, uh, not with Roush, but we have football stuff, and I have Bama, Florida on, loving it, love a good CBS broadcast. And I have to leave, and Alabama's killing them, and I just see the final score, and it was a two-point game. I didn't see any of the second half yeah. or how Florida looked so good, but just to see them keep it close, I'm a little more worried about a week five, not well, looking ahead. But well, Florida I, looks looks good. I swear it all started first off there, kick returner, had the fair catch, muffed it, the ball rolls out of bounds at the one yard li- half yard line, and he acts like he like acted like he him pointing and being like, nah, don't worry about it, was gonna make the ref put the ball to twenty five, and they were gonna start <laughs> from there. And the referee's just blowing his whistle, looking at the guy like, mm, the, the ball rolled out right here. This is where you're starting the drive. But then Alabama's linebacker could have easily stopped an angle route from a running back who had like seventy yards on that possession. They go down and they score. If he just tackles them there, I think it's a completely different ball game. That wasn't the weirdest special teams play of the game, though, Saturday. Did you see what happened, Doc Thompson, in the Memphis and Mississippi State game? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you watch SportsCenter, you saw it, so, and, and that's on my TV a lot. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, crazy, crazy thing there. The ref actually kind of like blew a w- – kind of like threw his hands out. It and was- I think that added to it a little bit. I think some of those guys stopped playing – but, I mean, kudos to the Memphis guy. I mean, just heads up play. Wild, right? Just play until they tell you not to. Absolutely. Until they blow it dead. And that's what infuriated me is, like, refs should let the play play on for as long as it's happening. Boise State was losing by one with four or five minutes to go. They get a scoop and score. And the ref blows it dead when he's ten yards away from running the end zone. Like, the guy had already picked up the fumble was running with nobody around him. They blow it dead. That would have given them the lead playing Oklahoma State at home. Review says, okay, it actually, you were right. It was a fumble, but we can't give you the touchdown, but you get the ball back. So all they got to do is kick a chip shot field goal, right? Gets, gets tipped at the line. They miss a 28-yard field goal, lose the game, all because the ref didn't let him play on. I was losing my mind watching that unfold. Like, refs, just let the guys play. Just let them play. Didn't let them play. They didn't let them play. And didn't. I had uh, Boise to cover. Didn't happen. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, the game that we all care about. South Carolina hosts Kentucky. It's been a pretty, pretty nice place for the Cats recently, except for their last trip down there when Sawyer Smith's arm, it was clear as day at that point that something was off. But if you all will recall, Kentucky was in danger of having its only shutout of the Mark Shoops era. They put Lynn Bowden at quarterback with Chris Rodriguez. Two guys who, I mean, Lynn had never played the spot. Chris was just another guy at that point. He was just the third running back that wasn't playing a lot, maybe even the fourth. And those two guys lead Kentucky down the field, changes the trajectory of the season. And now Kentucky is back with a new look, South Carolina under Shane Beamer. We got some Beamer ball going. They're going to play sound. They're going to play physical. They're going to play hard. Drew? How are you feeling about this game? I'm pretty confident, but I was also pretty confident this past weekend, so I got to got to reel that back a little bit. But I just don't think South Carolina is very good at all. Their quarterback that's been playing, as we all know, was supposed to be a coach, and now he's got a bandage on his arm and isn't practicing. I just uh, I think with Kentucky having a close scare, I know their minds will be right in this game, and I, I think they uh, they win. We get to 4-0 and see what's next from there. Charles um – I know you're feeling optimistic. I think of South Carolina, I think of about four things. Pack Stadium that's loud and enthusiastic. Think of Steven Johnson sticking his tongue out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How could what, we what a out? moment. I think of the crisp grass. Their grass on the field is immaculate. Oh, immaculate. Man. True grass. Not the turf stuff. Not the turf stuff. I'm not a fan of the turf stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Their grass is immaculate. And then I think of Mark Stoops 
jumping and what uh, body surfing, I guess. That was Missouri. That was not Missouri. That was Missouri. There was a big dance party at South Well, Carolina. I guess when I well, – yeah, my senior he, he year. He didn't crowd surf. Okay. Didn't crowd but surf. he did but get he up. Was, okay. Yeah. Well, then he that's what I think of. The chair. I'm pulling out the sledgehammer. I'm going cats. Oh. No, 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 no. no. Come on. We can't have Freddie's negative energy. Oh. oh. What? Fr- he's he's still got a, he's got to watch tape. Fr- oh man, I don't know about this, Chuck. Oh gosh, he's hit. Doc Thompson. How you feeling about this game? <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. I mean, I I think that um, we got our scare. I think we'll come out. I think Rodriguez has got to be just chomping at the bits to run all over them. And I think the offensive line will step up. They're, the last series, they looked really good there. And then the last game, I think they they turned it around. I think everybody's worried about the O line for for good reason. I mean, they had. First game of the year, they didn't run it very well. Against Then against Missouri, they crushed it on the ground. Then the last game, struggle on the ground. So, if there's any indication, they got one week off. They'll be fresh. They'll be ready. Um, you know, I, I don't think – I think it'll be a close game. I don't think it's, it's definitely going to be a blowout down in South Carolina. Um, I'll stick to what I said right after the game to a, to a few guys. I think, it's a, I think it's 10 points for us. I, I think I'll go as far as say uh, – Thirty-one twenty-one. Mm. You, you taking a hammer out on that one? I'm gonna just throw a score out there. I feel good about it. Oh, that's a um, hammer. I, I don't know if it, I'm chiseling away. I don't know if I'm <laughs> hammering away. Uh, He's got but the uh, but I, I'll, I'll go. I mean, listen, the, the guys gave us thirty points last week, so we got some to make up here in Vegas. I yeah. think we'll make up a few of them here. So mm-hmm. I'll go ten points, and I think we we pull off the W and come back for a night game against Florida, which I'm already salivating about. So if we, if Kentucky wins, it's more likely six and seven, right? Or is it more likely seven than six? The time on the Florida game. Oh, six is the win. Okay. Because that six is on ESPN. Yeah, the big that's stick. the good game. Oh, gotcha. Yes. yes. I uh, like the six o'clock. We talked about this off the air earlier. Six o'clock. That's that's just right for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's night, but it's not. Like the first half, there's just the sun's going to be up for some of it. So you're going to get the cool sunset in the background of the crow. It's going to look immaculate. And it adds an hour to your, your celebration. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. To the game seven. doesn't end at 11.30 and said it's more like 10-ish. Oh, man. Plenty of time to go out and enjoy some cocktails. Yeah, or uh, sit in the press box and drink coffee with you. Yeah, oh, that's awful. That's a great time <laughs> as well. Freddie, are you feeling, are, are you feeling positive? Uh, I think South Carolina's strength of the team is the front seven defensively, especially the front four. Very good. Jabari Ellis. Uh, Kingsley and Ibari is a very good player. Aaron Sterling, uh, Pickens in there. I think Kentucky strength offensively and for the team is the defensive line. So I like how that crosses out. Uh, but you mean this the offensive line. Offensive line. The game. The reason I'm picking Kentucky to win one. I think they have better better players, better roster. Two. I believe 100% Mark Stoops. I, I don't. I think that he. I think he is over there right now, or, or he's on his talk show right now, but he'll go back and just start wearing people out. <laughs> and and I, I, I 100% believe in Mark Stoops, and I think I believe in this football team. But I do agree with you, Doc. I think he could get close at times. It's going to be an uncomfortable three hours. Uh, but but I, I like Kentucky. If I will say this. The team that has the most run yards will win this game. I know that's old cliche, but if, if Kevin Harris gets, goes crazy for 150 or plus, that could that could be bad news for Kentucky. If 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 C Rod goes for one fifty plus, I think Kentucky wins easily. Can't, can't let this be Kevin Harris's breakout game, but no. I, I do expect the big blue ball to bounce back in a very big way. Yeah. They're gonna be But I'm challenged. taking Kentucky. Um Oh yeah. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. The, hey folks, the Cats it, it wasn't the prettiest thing, but it was a good wake up call for them. And Kentucky they didn't hit in as many shots as they did last week. But they will this week. They're going to be physical in the run game, establish that early, and get back to playing Kentucky football. Uh, Man, it's been a lot of fun.